Good afternoon. Today we're talking about the Nerd QX prototype. And what we're also going to do is I'm going to stand a little further away from the microphone today. I figured out if I just turn the volume up a little bit here, this little volume setting, then I can stand a little further away and I don't have it all close to my face sounding like Darth Vader when I make these videos. So that's something we'll do for this and future videos. But enough about that. Let's talk about this Nerd QX prototype. Not to be confused with the Nerd QX plus plus. That's a totally different thing. Totally different thing, okay? But I'm going to say this right off the bat. From a marketing and branding standpoint, not a good move. Especially when you consider that when you go to this page and you read about this thing, they really stress the fact that this is a whole new different thing. It says developed by an international team from the US, France, and Germany, Nerd QX is not simply an update to existing DIY miners. It is a completely independent project that combines technical precision, extreme scalability, and open source philosophy. Well, if it's completely different, which it may very well be, it sounds an awful lot alike the original. And when I go to Google and I type in Nerd QX, okay, it says, did you mean to say Nerd QX? No. I meant to say, Nerd QX, you son of a bitch. The horizontally oriented, all new, independent design, Nerd QX prototype. So that's what this thing is. It looks pretty cool. I have not had my, or not had a chance to get my hands on one of these yet, but I cannot wait to try it out. So let's go over the technical highlights. What differentiates this particular thing from the glorious and beautiful Nerd QX++. I have one of these things. I love this thing. In fact, I just bought a second one because I think they're really cool. And so that's where I stand. I think this thing is brilliant. It's a great little gadget. And it's, uh, it does a great job as a solo desktop Bitcoin lottery miner. But you already know what it is probably. Otherwise, why would you watch a video about the Nerd QX prototype? See, I'm already confused in the name. It's hard to, I'm so used to saying Nerd QX that saying Nerd QX is difficult. They need to switch that up. They need to call it something totally different. I, bad move. I don't know who to talk to about that, but I'm gonna, write some, I'm gonna write some letters today about it and put them in the mail. Let's take a look at this thing. What is the deal with this new Nerd QX? It has four ASIC BM1370 processors. Okay, so same as the Nerd QX++. New PCB design with significantly increased copper and optimized conductor tracks. Okay. So the entire layout of the Nerd QX has been redesigned electrically and thermally. That's a good idea. I like that. It improves the carrying capacity of the board, even under permanently high ASIC loads. Okay, so not a bad idea there. There is also dedicated cooling of the voltage regulators with custom-made heat sinks. Now, that's something that we always run into problems with, with this design here, with the Nerd QX. And when you buy this thing and you plug it in and you're running default settings, not much of an issue. Everything stays nice and cool. This single thermal right fan that's on the front, it does a fine job. It keeps things where they need to be. But the issue lies in this here. When you buy this thing, you're all excited and you plug it in and it starts doing its thing. And then you're sitting there and it's like, well, now what? Well, I'll tell you what the what is. The what is you start to mess with it. You want to get a little more juice out of it. You want to do some overclocking. You want to do some modifications. And as soon as you do that, all of a sudden, as soon as you step into that world of overclocking, now your temps are going to start to rise and you have to figure, figure out how to deal with them. So the way we typically do it is this right here. This is the NQ Helix designed by Pleb Base, the ones that wrote this article that I'm referring to here. And as you can see on this device, let me see if I can turn this here. So this thing, let's imagine that I am the nerd Q X plus plus and this thing is a, it would be strapped this way so like or if you know you're sitting there looking at it it comes this way and this circular portion here that allows you to adapt a 120 millimeter fan so you can replace your existing fan with a larger 120 millimeter fan but you also get a dual benefit here because this area on the top right above the circle this little duct here routes some of the air to the voltage regulators and keeps them both nice and cool so you've got that benefit that beneficial cooling on both areas that you don't have with just the single stock fan that comes with your Nerd QX++ device. 
And so the fact that this is already accounted for and thought out, definitely a huge improvement. I think that's a good move on their part. The next thing is an XT60 power connector. So in previous, previous versions of the NerdQ X++, they used a barrel connector, one of those you know, circular cylindrical connectors that just slots right in. In Rev6, they upgraded to an XT30. The XT60 is a larger version of that. I'm trying to figure out how I can show you a picture of it. In fact, you might be able to see it. Okay, so if you see on the power supply to the right of the unit, that little yellow thing right there, that's what replaced the old cylindrical style that was there. And the one for the Nerd QX is just a beefier version of this. So it allows for, you know, extremely low contact resistance, as they say here, high current carrying capacity, and reliable contact. Who wouldn't want that? They also have a mini automotive fuse. Oh, cool, it's got car parts in it. That's great. I love how these things are cobbled together out of God knows what. It's just whatever somebody could find. It's, these things are very much like, it's one thing when Apple designs an iPhone. Every single little part and piece is specifically built for that particular application. But with stuff like this, it's just cobbled together by guys who think this is cool and they're using whatever they can get their hands on. And this is evidence of that. It's car parts in the thing. Although fuses are pretty standard. You find you know car fuses and other stuff probably. We also have four pin PWM connector for up to three fans. So on the Nerd Q Ax, you have two four pin connectors. However, you can always run a splitter. When you start to do that, if you start to add three, four, five fans to one of these things, you're gonna have to upgrade your power supply because you're gonna overload the stock power supply if you start you know, tacking three, four, five fans on one of these things, although it's popular uh, or possible and popular. I see a lot of people running three fans on theirs. Uh, but this thing, you can put three fans on it right off the bat. So you can keep this thing ice cold. That's fantastic. Rounded PCB corners for better protection and overall high quality impression. Okay. Where's the corners at? I want to see those high quality corners. No pictures of the high quality corners? Get out of town, man. We're lacking here. Don't, don't make a bold claim like that. Don't tell me that I'm going to be impressed. Have, a, have an impression of high quality if you're not going to at least show me an example of this high quality rounded corner uh, that you're referring to here. Proprietary open source firmware. Okay, so same stuff. It's based on the estab established open source Nerd QX++ firmware. So same stuff. Uh, I don't think there's going to be any huge modifications to that. It looks like they're just going to fork it and make a few adjustments to allow it to work with this new device. It also says high performance power supply with stable 12V output. I don't know what kind of power supply this thing's gonna come with. Most of us who want to get into the world of overclocking will upgrade our power supplies to Meanwell. A lot of people with a single device, you're gonna use something like a Meanwell LRS 200. I like to run an LRS 350. The reason I do that is because I can run two NerdQ Ax++ off of one single power supply. And I have, uh, you know, I could just add a couple of XT30 cables to it. I can plug them both in, and this thing has plenty of juice. Both of my devices run at about 110, 115 watts, so, you know, a total of 230. Obviously, if I have 350 watts, that's what the 350 in LRS 350 denotes. So if you have 350, you're staying well below that 80% threshold that you always want to be mindful of with power supplies. So... If you have a, you know, a 100 watt power supply, you don't want to exceed 80 watts. That's what that means in simple, easily explainable terms. Lastly, we have significantly improved sensor technology for temperature monitoring of all four ASICs. Okay, that's cool. Um, I don't know how that actually plays out. I don't know what the difference is going to be. Uh, I guess, obviously, what they're implying here is that the temperature readout on a NerdQX++ is not entirely accurate, although this new design will be more so. Okay, that's fine. That's all fine and good. I think a lot of the stuff that they're doing is, is worthwhile. These are all of the problems that existed with the NerdQX++, although most of these things were easy to overcome with modifications, and that's what most of us, myself included, did. So I went ahead again and upgraded my power supply. I added an adapter and larger fans. I added some heat sinks to keep the thing nice and cool. So I've got plenty of power. 
I've got, you know, all the fans I ever need on the thing. Everything is good to go. But with this thing, it seems like more of an out-of-the-box solution without requiring a bunch of modifications. So that's up to you. Some of us like to do modifications, and I can guarantee you, I'll bet you everything I've got, that people are going to modify these two because we just can't leave stuff alone. That's the fun of, you know, who wants to buy like a cool car and just like leave it at that? People want to get new wheels. They want a, a new exhaust or whatever the case. Motorcycles are a great example of that too. Nobody just rides around on a stock bike. All of a sudden they get their fancy new clutch lever and brake lever. And then the next thing you know, they're getting a new exhaust. And then, you know, it just it goes on from there. People, guides especially, but people in general, like to mess with stuff because messing with stuff is fun. So again, no upgrade. This is a fresh start, okay? Very cool. I don't know what this thing is gonna cost. I think it's gonna be interesting to see what this thing cost compared to something like a Nerd QX++ with the modifications. So if you buy yourself a Nerd QX++ like this, which I love, it's gonna cost you $399. Then you have to get the Helix adapter, which if you have a 3D printer, no big deal. Download the file, print it. It's like a couple of dollars in electricity and filament maybe to make it. Or you get your buddy, you buy him some beers, we give him 10 bucks or whatever, and he will print you one. So that's pretty cheap. Then you buy a new fan, that's $25 American. So you're at $35 there. Some copper heat sinks. You're looking at another 15 bucks for a pack of those things. So now, you know, you're starting to add up a little bit there. What else did I do to this thing? Power supply. I'm trying to think of what the power supply cost. It wasn't terribly expensive, but I'm going to say all in, you're probably looking at about 500, maybe $520 by this time. You know, you add a front and back fan, the adapter, the power supply, the heat sinks. And so how that compares to this new device, we will see. Is this going to be about $500? It will certainly be more expensive than this Nerd QX Plus Plus. I just don't know how much. And right now, looking at the hash rate, this thing's showing a hash rate of 5.5. Now, they're not overclocking it. These are probably default settings. And remember, default settings on NerdQX++ get you about 4.8. So if out of the box, this thing is at 5.5 terahashes a second, can you overclock it up to 8, 9, 10 with some, you know, with some mods pushing it a little bit? Maybe. I don't know. Only time will tell on that stuff. We will have to find out exactly how it all plays out. But I think it's really cool. I think it's interesting. Um, I'm not really a fan of this, this horizontal orientation. I know they did that for a reason. The reason they did that most likely is they wanted to keep this thing relatively small. And then they added that huge heat sink to the V-Reg area. And when they did that, they didn't have a lot of room for this LCD screen right here. And so they had to cock it over on its side, and for this thing to make sense, they just took the whole device and tipped it over so you could read the LCD screen. But overall, I think it's really cool. I'm gonna post a link to this article. You can keep an eye on this thing. I'm sure they will mention when it is available for purchase. You can also read this article in depth if you wanna know more about it. It's exciting, I guess. It's interesting. You know, these things, I like to see the progression. It wasn't long ago when, you know, your desktop home miners, they were so, they weren't efficient and they had very low hash rates and so your odds and your likelihood of getting a bitcoin block for instance were like one in billions and so it was a novelty at best and these are still kind of that way i mean at five terahashes a second your chance of getting a bitcoin block is like you know one in a million or something probably one in 1.4 million or something like that with the current network difficulty uh, but that's still better than like one in a billion and it's cool to see that these things are continuing to progress they're continuing to get better and better because people just keep messing with them and redesigning them. And then they're making a lot of money selling them because these things are interesting. There are not many devices that you can purchase and plug in that could make you the amount of money necessary to go out and purchase yourself a new Ferrari. I can't really think of anything aside from like a lottery ticket that you can go and buy. And you're going to wake up and find out you have now $400,000. And that's what these devices can offer you potentially. And that's why they're exciting. And that's why people are starting to get into them. And that's why you're seeing a lot more about these little desktop lotto miners. Again, the ones, the previous versions, your Mars landers, the little USB miners, total pieces of shit. Interesting conversation pieces. And they're cool 
if you're a Bitcoin enthusiast, because yes, you're supporting the network, you're a part of it all, and technically, yeah, you're mining, uh, but your chances were just almost in the impossible range as far as actually being able to solve a block. But these devices, having actually solved a few blocks and having proved themselves on a few uh, occasions, it's exciting and it's added a lot of excitement to the whole Bitcoin mining community and it's made this whole thing so much more accessible for people who otherwise would not be able to get into the world of mining. Most of us don't have giant warehouses full of, you know, bitmains or whatever the case is. We just don't have that. And so this is a cool way to get involved in the world and say, yes, I am a Bitcoin miner, even if it's on a very, very small scale. So. Anyway, let me know if this thing interests you. It definitely interests me. I will definitely probably buy one just to check it out, see how it goes. I'm interested to see what the final version looks like. Will it look anything like this? Will they change the colors? Will they do a different heat sink design, different fan? I don't know. We'll have to see. So we'll just keep an eye out. Once it does, we will uh, make some more videos about it once there's a more finalized version. This is still like the concept. This is like when you see a concept car it's rough. Uh, I don't know how close this is to completion. Maybe the device will look exactly like this. So keep an eye out for it. Make sure that the thing is done and that you have a reputable source that you're purchasing it from. A lot of times with these sorts of devices, uh, you know, these are all open source. And so you'll get Chinese manufacturers who jump the gun and they will go and they will grab all the stuff off of, you know, some repository and they start building away prior to all the bugs being worked out. So you know, the other vendors that are more reputable, they will wait it out until a finalized, ready to sell version is actually, you know, available and they'll offer that product. So don't be the first one. You never want to be the first one to buy something. Uh, make sure again that it's one of the ones that's tested, finalized, proven, and give that one a try if this is something you are into. But if you don't want to wait and you want to go ahead and buy one of these things, now you can go to Solo Satoshi and buy yourself one. I'll put a link down in the comments where you can buy this thing. And I'll put a link to this thing if you want to read this article. So that's all I got for today. I saw this thing, thought it was cool, wanted to talk about it, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.